Hi, everyone. Aaron Sale here. We're going to talk about Lisfranc frank injuries, a relatively uncommon injury with significant sequelae. And despite it being on almost every EM board exam, uh, it's still missed about 20% of the time in the emergency department. So we'll cover some of the relevant pearls on history, physical exam, imaging, and ED management. To start with, though, the Lisfranc frank joint really is a series of joints. It's not just a single joint. So it's where the metatarsals Meet the cuneiforms and the cuboid. So the base of the metatarsals with the cuneiforms and the cuboid. Generally, the injury is more medial, but it can extend to involve out the lateral aspect. The medial midfoot is really important in walking. It maintains that medial arch. And if it's disrupted, it can cause significant arthritis and pain down the road, especially if we miss it in the emergency department. Uh, as many of us know, Liz Frank was a surgeon in Napoleon's army, and, and the joint takes his name because he did amputations through this joint. Most say it was because of soldiers falling off horses with their foot caught in the stirrups. Others say it was because of forefoot infections, and that's what caused the amputation. To be honest with you, I'm not sure because I wasn't there, but either way, his name has been linked to this injury uh, for about a couple of hundred years. In looking after this properly in the emergency department, we need to appreciate that there's a wide spectrum of injury. So you can have high energy cases, you can have relatively low energy cases. It can involve a single joint, or it can involve all the joints across this with various patterns to each. There are obvious x-ray findings, but some are truly radiographically occult. And again, in management, some of them are operative, many are operative, but some can be treated non-operatively. And then as is kind of our thinking in emergency medicine, we're geared to try to pick up these subtle presentations. So how do we pick these up? You won't be surprised to realize that this is actually from the history of the physical. So number one, you need to know the forces. You can have a high energy mechanism that causes a Liz Frank injury. So a fall from a ladder, someone in a motor vehicle collision with their foot being collapsed on the floorboard, that certainly can cause it. But it's also common in sports. Plantar flexion, external rotation is the typical force. So landing a jump awkwardly, if somebody's in a playing football with a cleated shoe, their foot is caught in the turf and then maybe someone you know, piles onto them and that causes the external rotation. Somebody who's windsurfing, their foot is strapped in and if they have an awkward little twist, that can cause uh, a list frank injury. It can also happen with lower energy mechanisms. So the classic story, somebody walking in a park at nighttime, they don't see a hole, they put their foot down, expect the ground, find the hole, and then again, you get the plantar flexion, external rotation. So if you ever hear that story, it's a red flag for a Liz Frank. On physical exam, it's really important to actually examine them. You need to take off both the socks, both the shoes. Look at what normal is like. Look for swelling. Plantar bruising on the medial aspect of the foot is a red flag. And it may be delayed. So if they come into you an hour or two after injury, don't expect to see the plantar bruising. But if they injured a day or two before, look for it. Because if you see it, medial midfoot plantar bruising, that's a red flag. As well, touch them. Dorsally, medially, plantarly. Like the lateral side of the foot, a very common place for injury to occur. But if you see medial foot, plantar, dorsal, along the base of the metatarsals, this should just raise your antenna that, hey, one second, something's going on. This should be a red flag. Patients with the Lisfranc Frank really cannot walk comfortably in your emergency department. They, they may walk on their heel. Uh, typically, they're non-weight bearing, but they won't be walking comfortably. On the x-rays, there are three standard views. So there's an AP, an oblique, and a lateral. For the AP, look carefully for soft tissue swelling. The alignment of the base of the first metatarsal with the medial cuneiform should be perfect. The alignment of the base of the second with the middle cuneiform should be perfect. Look at the gap between the first and the second metatarsal. Look for subtle fractures, typically around the base of the second metatarsal. There can be a tiny little wisp of bone called a fleck sign. A little fleck of bone gets avulsed off. So look carefully at this. And what drives you to worry about that is your history and physical. On the oblique, pay close attention to the base of the third and fourth metatarsals because they should align perfectly with the lateral cuneiform and with the cuboid respectively. So look for that on the oblique film. Look for little avulsions at the base of the third and fourth metatarsals. On the lateral film, the base of the first metatarsal should align perfectly with the medial cuneiform. It's a very stable joint, so any subluxation needs to be worrisome. A few other points about x-rays. If you suspect some subtle malalignment on the foot x-ray, consider taking comparison films of the other foot. As well, appreciate that it's possible for the foot to have subluxed, to have reduced anatomically without any bony injury, and to have a purely ligamentous injury with normal alignment, and still be unstable. 
And in these cases, x-rays and even CT can be normal. So the clinical concern, again, comes from history and physical, and we shouldn't over-rely on imaging. And as a final imaging point, just to drop, forget about doing weight-bearing films in eMERGE. Like, weight-bearing films certainly may reveal subtle widening, but most eMERGE patients are in too much pain to weight-bear properly. So any, quote, weight-bearing views are likely to be suboptimal, unhelpful, and can even be misleading. In terms of eMERGE management, it really gets down to whether the injuries are stable or not. So unstable lis frank injuries are operative. Stable lis frank injuries may be treated conservatively, which means non-weight-bearing and no operation. So looking at the spectrum of injury, if it's displaced, it's going to be unstable. But if it's undisplaced, it can either be stable or unstable. So we can't just say because it's, it's in good position that it's a stable injury. So in the eMERGE department, if you see a Lis frank injury with marked displacement dislocation, of course, we should image it first. Attempt a reduction in the eMERGE just to protect the soft tissues because they can swell a lot. Then you'd immobilize it with a splint, watch for compartment syndrome, refer to ortho from the emergency department. If it's mildly displaced, then we should splint them and review with ortho from the emergency department at a reasonable hour so they can plan management. Often it's surgical. If it's clinically suspected or anatomic, then a posterior slab, non-weight-bearing, and close follow-up is really what we should be doing. And the decision to operate is based on whether it's stable or not, and that's really hard for us to determine in the emergency department. The definitive test is actually stressing the joints, often as an exam under anesthesia. And these are decisions typically made by the surgeons and not for us in the emergency department. What we need to have is a low threshold for suspecting them, and if you, based on history and physical, you think they've got it, just protect them. CT is generally a management tool for surgical planning, so using it purely diagnostically in the eMERGE can be an issue since there certainly are cases of CT-negative, unstable Lis frank injuries. So in summary, keep these uncommon but worrisome injuries on your differential diagnosis by appreciating the mechanism, examining for swelling, bruising, tenderness, paying close attention to the films but not over-relying on them, Review with ortho cases from the eMERGE that are displaced and protect with a posterior slab, non-weight bearing, and close follow-up those patients that you're worried about. Hope this helps you on your next shift, folks. Thanks a lot.